Well, currently the Gora Road is shut, so we've had to come in through Fisheries Road, and as soon as we have jumped on the start of this, we got a little bit of mud to negotiate. Plenty of traction underneath though, so it is just a nice little christening. This area, if you are from the East Coast states, you won't see too much of this. It is absolutely beautiful. It is full of xanthorea, which are grass trees, and the banksias at the moment are absolutely popping. This stuff around here, I think you'd call it a low set heathland, but the grass trees, the banksias, they're just beautiful. There's some uh, kangaroo paws just through there. What a blessing to see kangaroo paws blossoming in their native environment, in their native state. It's a long run up here with no towns, no services, and definitely no fuel. We've had to calculate our fuel range big time here and take into account the soft tracks that will definitely increase our fuel consumption. We've got a 125 litre tank installed in the Everest and a 160 litre tank in the Ranger. But Ian has had to pack a few jerry cans in his stock Raptor petrol V6. This is a copybook demonstration of a bow wave, something we should all aim for during water crossings. Look at how Josh is pushing the water in front of him so the water at the height of the grill is lower than the height of the front of the bow wave. It's all about picking the right speed, too fast or too slow, and the water lands in your engine bay causing potential damage. But this is the perfect speed. Nice one, mate. A little further down the track, I spied something strange in this remote area. A young bloke running. Hey, on, mate. Hey, um, man. Nice day for a jog. <laughs> <laughs> car's gone flooded about like four or five k's up that way. Um, Wondering if you guys had like a sat map, sat satellite phone or. Willis was planning on running about 60 to 80 kilometres with nothing but a small water bottle and a can of Red Bull. He was in serious danger and could well have succumbed to dehydration running that far with so little water. But he wasn't out of trouble yet. His diesel engine had sucked in a gut full of water. And diesels are a lot more picky than petrol engines when it comes to fuel quality. So Josh and Ian set to work trying to flush the water out of his engine and fuel system. I was kind of prepared just to keep going until I got phone service and I could call somebody. Yeah. Luckily as I ran into you guys. Have you done much full driving in the past mate? Or you... Well full driving, you don't currently count this as full driving but uh, back with um, like my dad he he's a bit more into it than I am so I've gone with him but never never solo like this before we're driving nut. No. Yeah, fair enough mate, fair enough. Well, we will do our best to try and uh, help you out. If we if we can't get a running again, we'll at, at the very least, uh, yeah, get the sat phone cranking and see if we can get some help in here. So, yeah. Nah, I appreciate that Pat. Uh, my pleasure mate, we'll try and get you on the road. We're in a remote part of Western Australia at the moment and we've come across a fellow who's hydraulic his vehicle. Lucky for him, he's come across a TV film crew who happened to have a Ford engineer and a mechanic on board. So we're really doing our best to try and help him out using our tools to get him back on the road. But if he wasn't so lucky, he'd really want to have recovery cover for his vehicle because it would be an incredibly expensive recovery out of this part of Western Australia. So keep that in mind when you're traveling remote parts of Oz to have recovery cover built in to your 4x4 insurance policy. Club 4x4 is one company that does it, probably the only company that does it that I'm aware of. You can get 1500 bucks worth of recovery cover or you can even bump it up to 15,000 or $30,000 worth of recovery cover. So it's a lot of peace of mind because this would be one seriously expensive extrication. Uh, 
looking for any water ingress around the bottom of the injector there. It seems to be plenty of dirt there and there's some emulsification at the top. Poor Willis, you could clearly see the stress on his face. If this car doesn't start, then he's got big, expensive trouble ahead of him. How will he get out of here? And to his final destination of Kalgoorlie. Once the injector's out, it's clear that it'd be nice. Normally in my kit with me, gets to, uh, I would have a, um, a little camera that you can stick down um, the injector into the cylinder and have a quick look and just see if there's any damage or any water in there. We're going to try and probably do that with an iPhone, something like that, and have a quick look down there. And then um, once we check that, um, we'll probably be turning the engine over and try and see if we can get any water to come out uh, with a normal um, stroke of the um, pistons going up and down in the, in the cylinders. This is slow and tedious work in less than ideal conditions, but we're determined to help out this young adventurer. All of us have been in similar positions early in our adventure pursuits. This must be heartbreaking for Willis. It's not looking good. Things aren't getting easier. Now Willis's battery has given up the ghost and we've had to loan him one of ours to help kick him over. What an experience to help this young bloke get back on the road. So with a few water crossing tips, we bid Willis goodbye and headed back along the track towards the Bill Bunya Dunes. Well, fellas, I think we made one young man very, very happy, but let's face it, we've all been there, haven't we? And uh, well, we've needed a helping hand on the road. We're all stoked as well. There's nothing better than helping somebody out when you're on the trails and, and they're in trouble. Mate, I've found myself in Willis's exact position or predicament before and um, I remember the gut wrench so I'm, I'm happy we were there and I'm happy he's safe now. It's genuinely what I love about four-wheel driving. We live in such a digital world but four-wheel driving is one of those tangible things where you can help people out and often people need a helping hand and uh, it's, it's fun to give that helping hand, it makes you feel good, but it's also nice to receive that helping hand because you know there, there's a real humanity behind it that um, you just don't find in a lot of other lifestyles. Yeah, I tell you what, Pat, you know, I've overlanded all over the world and what I take away is human beings are inherently good and they, they want to help you regardless of, the, of where they are in the world, the, the situation that you're in. If you're in trouble, they'll always try and help you. And, I know it sounds a very naive thing to say, but it's just so true that um, overlanding kind of has that spirit, doesn't it, of helping each other out. And it's it's not just that, you know, we're out here filming a show, these schedules are tight, but there was no question none of us were going to leave without getting that, that car going, or at least getting Willis back to town. Four drivers, we're one big family, and I know that that definitely does sound like a cliche, but it's something I firmly believe. I've never felt unsafe on the road never felt truly stranded because I knew at some point someone would always be there to help if I needed it and um, today we were those people. It's just a great, great thing. <laughs>